They say that teenagers don't know what love is. But I don't know who they are, and I never liked what they have to say. I was 13 when I learned how to love without blood. Unfortunately, just because you know how to love doesn't mean that you understand how to speak it. I had the misfortune of having the man that I do as my dad. Philip Johnson probably should have never reproduced, because reproducing is only the first step to earning the title of dad, and he was never quite up to the task of the steps that came after the reproduction part. I firmly believe that you aren't always handed the people that you wanted in life. But I also know that if you are willing, life will give you the people that you need. Fortunately, I had the privilege of knowing Paul Andrew, but we never called him that. He was always the man from work, Team FW, or T. Unfortunately, I don't think T knew how to say I love you, because while it was always understood, it was never articulated. Tragically, he also didn't know how to tell people goodbye or that he was about to die. Too often I think we put our dead on a pedestal, a platform that they never stood on when they were alive, and I refuse to play into that social game. I'm not saying that the man from work was a bad man because he wasn't. Bad men don't spend time with the children who aren't theirs. Unkind men do not receive love from children who aren't theirs. I'm not saying that TMFW was a good man because he wasn't. Good men don't leave a six-year relationship in a six-line email. Impressive men don't leave it up to the children who aren't theirs to tell them goodbye through the promise of a delivered voicemail. The fact is, most men aren't good. They aren't bad. And T wasn't exempt, even in death. The man from work was just a man. A man who believed that love was an action, not in diction. T was a man who left three women in this world with broken hearts and a lot left to say he was a man with an illegal love affair, but he was a man respected enough to keep a secret for. Sometimes. I'll see a middle-aged bald man on the street and for a moment, I'm convinced that it was all just a lie, that he didn't actually die, and when I realize it's not him, I want to rip into the stranger on the street, but you're not supposed to scream at the unknown, but I don't know how I'm supposed to get closure without the rampage I feel I'm entitled to. So I guess I'll just wait. For T to show up in my dreams, so I can tell him everything I have left to say. You were the only father I ever knew. I miss you. I hate you. You're a coward. I hate that you were cremated because seeing a tiny box of your ashes wasn't what I needed to tell you goodbye. I hate that you don't have a marker anywhere because I don't know how else to visit the dead. I know that some people are talking to God when they yell at the sky, but I'm telling you right now, you just push God aside because when I'm shouting to whatever is above my words are for you. You will forever be my number one two-star. I'm proud of you. I'm disappointed in you. Didn't anyone tell you that it takes more than 24 hours to tell some goodbye? It takes more than a minute-long voicemail to convey six years of unspoken emotion. I love you. And I loved you from the moment that you stepped into our lives. I love you even when I'm so angry that I start to cry because when life gives you the dad that you needed, you don't dare. Stop loving the man from work.